all right guys welcome to a new video in the last video we had set up the geometry and we had run the simulation and in this video i'm just going to be looking at the results as you can see 500 iterations are complete <clears throat> and here we are looking at the total pressure at the outlet and look at how nice and steady that is uh, initially during the start of the simulation it's just changing but after some time you're seeing that it's actually flat this is the type of convergence check that you need to be doing with the variable that's important for you now it doesn't matter which simulation it is you might be doing a different type of cfd simulation don't just look at the solvers convergence criteria that might actually be skewed and sometimes it can give you incorrect results and uh, you might be wondering what went wrong so always look at physical quantities and see if they're actually converging or if they are exhibiting some type of periodic behavior that's what you need to look for all right so one thing that i wanted to mention is that i made a change which i forgot to record so under calculation control options you you would have noticed that the goal convergence would also get checked in automatically now in the video now in the previous video you might have not seen this because we actually set up the goals afterwards so what the solver does is it automatically checks in that and this is bad because if this option is checked in the solver actually stops before 500 iterations so for me it actually stopped at 173 iterations so i stopped my simulation went back unchecked this and reran the simulation till 500 iterations so if you are noticing that your simulation stopped at 180 or 190 iterations that's because this goal convergence criteria has been checked uncheck it and you should all be good so now let's look at some results the first thing that i'm going to be looking at is some flow trajectories because that helps me understand how the fluid is moving around uh, for this i'm going to be selecting my intake phase and also my outlet phase and let's start with say 200 points and if we just click ok this is going to take some time to calculate uh, <clears throat> all right so perfect so i'm just going to hide the geometry for now to understand how the flow takes place and we're also going to hide the computational domain all right so that we can see what's going to we can see what's happening so you can see that the flow is taking place in the right direction so i can right click and play to understand how the flow takes place so you can see that the flow is spinning uh, and then it's getting sucked in at the low pressure region that's created by the impeller that's what causes the high velocity and then it's it's spun and then it actually goes out through the outlet at a higher pressure when i look at this i do see that there is some amount of uh, recirculation being created in other words the fluid is spinning unnecessarily this typically means that the pump has been designed badly which in this case is true because you know we are using a made-up geometry all right uh, because clearances are really really important uh, you need to have good clearance you need to have the right amount of clearance between the impeller and the casing because that determines how much vacuum the pump can generate so that it can suck in the inlet fluid all right so but qualitatively this this result is not bad okay so you can also play with other type of plots to understand how the flow takes place but i think this single animation does the does the job of explaining how the moving reference frame approach can be used to simulate pumps using solidworks all right so based upon this your task is to actually perform a parametric study for your final project so for your project so based upon this your task is to perform a parametric study so what you need to do is uh, first let me just stop this guy right click and you can click on a new parametric study and uh, the parameter that i'm going to be adding is just the boundary conditions so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the outlet velocity add that and uh, just uh, maybe provide a starting value so we are starting at 10 which i think is okay and maybe we can go up to say uh, 30 meters per second you know something like that and we can maybe use five values now this now what we are trying to do here is create a performance curve so we are basically increasing the flow rate and we are going to compare how the outlet total pressure is going to change ideally if you have a, ideally if you have a realistic geometry then you can actually refer to the pumps performance curve and uh, provide realistic boundary conditions but since we are using made up geometry uh, you know i'm just going to 
make up these examples so there is a good chance that some of these examples might fail um, you your task your task is to actually run it and your your task is to actually run it and explain the results that you're getting so as far as the setup goes make sure that you do something like this and uh, oops if i click on open i need to select my output parameters i definitely need the total pressure at the outlet because that's going to be the goal that i'm measuring now you can add additional cut planes you can add additional cut plots or surface plots to get more interesting results and once you get the different scenarios hmm interesting so looks like there's just one scenario so let me just click on this guy oh that's because my n is set to one i'm just going to change this to six i'm just going to change that to six and click ok oh and this one let's go back let's change this to 20 meters per second click ok all right there we go so now if i go to scenario hopefully i should be able to see everything now all of these cases are going to be running till 500 iterations so that's the best part so what i can do is i can just hit submit and uh, you know since this is a project i won't be discussing the results that i get but when you run this you will be getting the velocities at the outflow as a function of you will be getting the total pressure at the outlet as a function of the velocity so you can use both these data sets to create a pressure versus flow to create a pressure versus flow rate plot and that is going to be the result that i'm expecting from your project all right with that i would like to conclude this video thank you bye